All right. It is a w different day for the Grease Monkey stream. It's Tuesday, currently 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, I usually do these streams on Saturdays, but I need my Saturdays free from now until the future. So I am now doing streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm doing two streams. So instead of not doing a stream on Saturday... Or instead of one stream on Saturday, you get two during the weekday. Hopefully this works out time-wise for people. If not, that's okay. This is just when I can stream. Uh, people can watch it afterwards, if anything. Ferd, it's good to see you at 1.30 p.m. on a Tuesday. W weekday. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you have made it. I thought, you know, not doing it Saturdays was going to throw me all out of whack. But like I said, I got notification of your stream. Nice. I'm glad the notification system's still working then. Thank you, YouTube. And I'm at home now again. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Well, good. I have somebody. It's not just going to be a silent stream until I get people. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, no longer doing Saturdays. I might throw others off though. Yeah, it probably will, unfortunately. But I need, I've been, I've been, uh, but um, on Saturdays, the last few streams, I'm like, I gotta make this short. I gotta make this short. So it just comes to a point where I'm like, you know, let me uh, just change the date and just deal with it and do what I can do. But I'm doing two streams now, so two streams, Tuesday, Thursday, around this time, and I'm doing this time because. When I was looking at my analytics, it shows that people mostly watch my videos around noon. So like 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So like in that range. Um, so that's what I did now. I'll, I'll still experiment with time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But it will be Tuesdays and Thursday. Anywho, on today's stream, uh, I will be modeling this walkie-talkie. This walkie-talkie is from a game that I really like. Yeah, I missed your last set of streams, but I saw you spent an extra hour and a half looking at Kelly's models. Yes, yes, I was gonna get off, but Kelly had a model freshly made to, sh to and and you know, uh, he wanted to use the tune sh or wanted to see how the tune shader works. So that's a I love taking those opportunities to make sure that my tune shader works correctly instead of me just like, hey, just use it, and everybody's coming in the problem. So I used the tune shader, went through his model. But it was mostly an exercise in extending to see if getting any ideas to improve the tune shader, where it falls or anything. But after that hour and a half, I was pretty confident with the tune shader and how flexible it can be and how simple I want to keep it for now. Um, but yeah, and, and that was just and you said it looks pretty good. Thank you. And that's just if um, and I worked on it for like quick, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't even trying to get in there and I was just trying to like show show Kelly that this will look good and this will like, <laughs> you know, like, and you know, and for myself, cause like the last time I did the, the live stream w where I was showing the tune shader, like some things broke live on stream. So then I was like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta fix this. I can't, can't do it. So that's why I like doing it live. It, it really shows those, those faults while I'm trying to like show something. So it did. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, it's so nice to be here. I wasn't expecting to have a chat with anybody. <laughs> yeah, you got in the zone when you're in help mode. Oh yeah, my favorite mode is help mode. I love, I love demystifying complicated stuff for people. I'm like, no guys, it's all in here. You're fighting your brain. Uh, all right. So, what I'm gonna be doing here. In this stream is there's a game called Gravity Rush. Let me put it on screen here. Is it this one? Nope, that's my YouTube. So this is a game called Gravity Rush. Came out in the PlayStation 3, and I believe you could play it on the PlayStation 4. Oh no, it came out in the PlayStation 4. Uh and I shaved and yeah, I shaved the side. Shaved the I'm I am I'm well groomed. I don't now. I, I don't. I no longer look like a depressed 
30s man who's just living on a wire <laughs> so yeah it feels good finally got the haircut got everything um so yeah doing this is game called gravity rush 2 i like it a lot the art in gravity rush 2 uh the game is a lot of fun it's not for everybody but the game in gravity rush 2 uh the art the artist let's see who the art artist here is takashi Oga and shunsuki sato um my screen is flickering you can see it on my face good thing the stream's not flickering okay no it's no longer flickering um but it was so yeah these two artists were inspired by mobius and mobius is a great artist i think uh i realized that i'm inspired by mobius i liked gravity rush's art style uh and then the, i found out that that art style is inspired by mobius and mobius has like, like these really neat uh like vibrantly colored uh gradients and everything uh artwork where he uses like solid colors with these gradients you can see how it's like light blue here dark blue you can see the purple at the top here goes down that's a little bit where my tune shader is inspired getting those gradients in i love the gradients so uh once i realized that after i beat the game i realized that 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 it, it's always been my inspiration and the tune shader is essentially inspired by that uh i decided to get something from gravity rush like an item model it out and use the tune shader and grease pencil because what's interesting about i think mobius's artwork is not only the gradients the solid colors um there's like this detail of line let's see if i can see it there's like this like uh like bumpy line feeling right you can see it all along the edges some of them are pretty solid or like this light uh, line work here on the object itself. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to not only model something, use the tune shader with the gradient, because you can even see it here in this image from the game. It's light green here, dark green at the bottom. Beautiful, right? Um, but it also has like these lines here uh, that I will be doing with the grease pencil. So I'll be doing modeling it out, using the tune shader, using the grease pencil, and see how close I can come to making this in blender and and, and 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 getting it close and stuff without using any like texture painting uh, i definitely want to get into texture painting i'm still uh in the process of demystifying that for myself before i unleash it or at least make tutorials for the world there's plenty of tutorials online though if you ever want to but that's what i'll be working on today it's gonna be this little walkie talkie from the game Gravity Rush, where the art style is inspired by Mobius, which I'm also inspired by. All right, that's uh, my 10 minute intro. Uh, let's let's uh, let's get started here. How are you doing this fine Tuesday, Ferd? If you're still here, how how are things? How tis it? Will you be checking out Grease Pencil? from mesh from the gumroad link i provided a few weeks ago you know what i will now because yeah if i remember correctly that was like something to automate the process right to make like that outline look if you can get that link again for me <laughs> i should have saved it if you can get that link again for me that would be great all right so let's start with the modeling process uh since my toon shader works on a gradient on the z on the z axis up and down i'm going to be modeling it kind of like in front view so pressing numpad one another thing's the screencast keys he updated it three days ago so now it works on 3.1 very happy I, this is my favorite screencast keys i like how customizable it is and I like how it looks on screen. Maybe I should make it bigger too. So let's make the mouse size bigger. Maybe the font size bigger. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's start modeling, right? So I'm gonna start off with uh, making uh, a plane. So let's start with a plane, right? I'm gonna go to edit mode, rotate on the axis and the x-axis uh, and we're just going to model that we're going to eyeball most of this it's not going to look exactly like this image but we'll get it close 
you know, we can always fiddle with it later. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, and let's actually get everything about it. So let's cut it in half. So shift control R, cut it in half, and then we'll do some control B here. go uh, we'll go into line mode and we'll scale on the X uh, we will cut it again in half let's see we need we need it twice so control R and then control B it's like a, be a bevel now we get the line mode here we'll scale it on the X try to make it as subtle as we can here once again, this ain't going to be perfect. We just want to get something similar, something inspired by. Uh, for fun, I'm going to put the origin point, oops, at the, the origin point at the bottom. So let's do that. Set origin point to 3D cursor. There we go. Uh, I'm also going to take off this grid and stuff because I don't like seeing it. There we go. Do you have the power or should I just DM you uh, on Discord? You will momentarily have power. Bum, bum, bum. You have been promoted. For the stream too, for anybody watching. It's always good to do some repetition for people to know this exists. All right, you currently have the power. And then I will remove you. I will demote you. Okay. There it is. And removed. So let me click on that again. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Grease pencil from mesh. Nice. It has all these options too. Yes, I'll definitely be testing this out once we start getting into the grease pencil, the grease pencil phase. Because yes, this is exactly what I what I think would make the whole process easier. All right. All right. So here we are. Uh, and what I want to do from the beginning is uh, what I'm aiming for is these beveled edges here. That's why I'm doing it flat first. It's just easy to think about. So it's all beveled all on the sides. We're going to build out this first green piece, and this is going to be separate, the little the little handle, the little hook stuff. And then we're going to figure out the rest of this stuff here. Um, so let's first do rounded corners. So I'm going to choose um, all the points that I want beveled. So... Since there's not many, I'll do them by hand. I think it's all the points. Yeah, it's all the points. Uh, and I think the, uh, I want to bevel. Usually when you bevel, you, you bevel edges. I think that's like control B, but I think control shift B. Yes, it bevels corners, right? So then that's when you can add in some rounded edges here. So what I'm going to do is instead of beveling these inside ones, I'm going to figure out a solution for that. I'm going to just bevel these edges here. So control shift B. And we'll bevel these corners. It'll be very slight. We'll add in. How many do we have here? Ooh, too many. One, two, maybe, maybe that many. Four. Or is that five? Five. I'm holding shift. And we'll just do the edges very slightly there. All right good stuff and let's see if it'll work here in these four corners control shift b it does make like an interesting interesting look there my only issue is you know i want i get really particular and technical with these with this stuff and that holds me back honestly <laughs> it's not good to be very nitpicky about this stuff really you should just eyeball it so i'm just going to bring this lower and then try it again. And I'm going to make it so it only goes halfway. So control shift B. 
about there. And then I'll do these. Just control them individually. Control shift B. There. And honestly, this may punish me later on. So we'll see if there's a better way of doing this. But we will. This is what we'll do first. Is there an advantage to doing it flat bit rather than extruding it from a general volume? No, no. You can work on it how, however you, you feel comfortable. For me, I'm always about simplification, right? So with the volume, with the, with the volume, um, I don't know. I just think there's, there's just more to think about. So I have to like get these edges. Oh, I've screwed this up a lot. Anyway, like in 3D, there's always a bunch of ways to do stuff, right? So, like, this just makes me think a lot more. Like, I have to, like, turn around and be like, all right, let me get these edges here so I can bevel them, you know, and then rotate it and do the thing. Uh, and you can do it this way. This is definitely, you know, a fine way of doing it. You know, and there, we got, like, the same thing. Uh, you know what? It is probably, now that you mention it, let me see if this is going to cause me any any issues in the future. We'll keep that one on the side. We'll extrude on the Y. <laughs> this is going to cause me issues. Let's see. You know what? You know what, Fern? This is what we do at live. <laughs> this is causing me issues. My mind. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. You got all the extra weirdness edges. You're absolutely right. All right. All right. I'm glad you're here because I would have just did this silently by myself and just scoffed. <laughs> all right. So we will do it with the volume, which is much better idea. Let's get the right sizing here. Oh, actually, let's start over. I guess in my head, nice iPhone. <laughs> I'm sure that's how uh, how the iPhone was invented. Like you know, just do do a little blender, do some extruding. <laughs> All right. Right, there we go. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Boom. We'll do the same thing, right? Center. We'll do one of these. Kind of eyeball it. We'll go back to face mode. Scale the X. All right, we're just modeling away. You're the next Johnny Ives. <laughs> All right, let's see if beveling this causes me any issues. Do five segments here. Speaking of Apple, that new Mac Studio thing is a beast. Yeah, man. What is it? The the M1 Ultra it has like two M1 chips or something. Two two M1 Max chips. Rectangular chip chip design. It's pretty pretty bonkers. Pretty pretty bonkers. Yeah, definitely can't deny the power that thing has, man. How much is it going to cost? Did they talk about that? Hmm. 
Interesting stuff. I still have some weirdness on these edges. So let me see something. Alright, let me do something else. Yeah, the base max is 2000 and the M1 Ultra starts at 390, 3999. Nice. You gonna get one, Fred? <laughs> you gonna be trailblazing out there? I wish. <laughs> I'd love to have one if I had the money. For sure. Alright, let me do a selection trick here. Select boundary loop we'll bevel it 0 0.04 so the same bevel on both sides uh we're gonna do something here we're gonna put the normals put it on auto smooth 30 degree angles uh yeah so i did the bevels first on the edge and now let's see if this makes more sense i'm going about this the wrong way and this is what modeling is right just like a ton of troubleshooting Doing it live, you'll see it. You'll see my pain. Yeah, some weirdness going on there, too. If we did a bevel modifier, how would that look? Let's see. Interesting, interesting. All right, so I get some weirdness still in these like little sections here, right? Like it's like super annoying. 0 0.04, right? Like the, let me put it in a mat cap, right? That you can actually see some of this stuff. Like so those little, those little, those little baby corners. I, I don't think it'll matter. But, like, maybe it will. <laughs> maybe. All right. So, is this... Now, in this in, in this moment, I'm like, all right. So, is this the best way to approach this situation? I even think about having all these uh, faces and stuff separated, right? Like, should I just have this face separated from the rest of the faces and just have a bevel? Things like that, right? So, let's... Let's keep thinking about this. All right, because what we're trying to get is this these, these little edges here, this slight, the little slight curves, or I could just fake it and draw that on, right? <laughs> draw it on with like a, the grease pencil or something uh, and do that. What I could definitely do is uh, you know what? We're just gonna we're gonna blast through this, and then maybe we'll figure it out on the way, right? So we're just gonna go. We're gonna go. Sometimes staying stuck. Sometimes you just gotta keep going. Except except the mistakes that are bound to happen, right? All right. So there's our cornered edges that have like some weirdness to them. We'll do the same thing with these, and we'll just deal. We'll just deal with those issues. Yeah, a lot of weird, a lot of weirdness, man. All right, let me think, let me think. So I see the face. We got this rounded edge corner. It connects to the top. 
we move through, right? We got the bottom edge. The bot this is beveled. Corners are rounded. All right, let's let's go back. Can we go all the way back from before the bevel? Yes. Would additional loop cuts do anything? Uh, Gratian, I think your name. Gratian, would additional loop cuts do anything? See, yeah, I don't think so, right? Because, like, if I do a loop cut, like, where exactly would you say the loop cut goes? Like, if we do a loop cut there, right, in the middle of that, we're still, when we bevel this, this is still going to cause this to be an uh, an end gun, right? So an end gun has, like, more than four more more than four points right it's on a quad uh and then that's that th this end gun is what causes the shading issues so if i hit smooth and then i put in the auto smooth i mean it looks better actually gratian so let's go with that oh man i love having chat here <laughs> they're giving me the ideas Okay, okay, okay. I also don't have the um the initial bevel and that's what what was causing the issue before. So let's let's do that. Let's go back. I just want to be more precise with this. All right, so we're going to do this. Control B. What is it? Point 04. We'll do the same thing for all the other edges. Control B, 0 0.04. Okay. Uh, and then these top edges, 0 0.04. And then we're going to use the bevel modifier and see if that would uh, would would actually work, right? 0 0.04. We'll hit smooth. We'll do this auto smooth here. So we got the smooth edges, right? Right, 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 right. All right. And now we'll do the bevel modifier. Bevel modifier. Here it is. All right, you know, pretty decent. My only issue here is that's all I can do. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very small bevel. I wish I could do it. This one's like much bigger, right? Like it goes, goes all the way across. Uh, is it? Should it be with percentage? Gross. Absolute. Mm, offset. So offset looks the best, but it, I can't really change this, even though it looks pretty good right now. It's like one or nothing, huh? Oh, but if I put more lines, it like really screws that up. So we'll do one. Oh, we got hard normals here. All right, let me deactivate the bevel for right now. And I want to see how much weirdness this causes. All right. So maybe this is what we can do. Let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test something out. I'm going to erase all the faces. Uh, and I'm going to do a grid fill. And I'm going to see if that works. So instead of selecting all these individual ones, I'm going to just select one face, hit Control, Shift G, and then select similar. And I'm put the same normal. So since they're all facing the same way. So, okay. So I have an empty, empty thing now, right? So if I uh, just select the edge, so I press two, go to edge, select the edge. Uh, I'm going to do a grid fill. And if I remember correctly, that is control F grid fill. So that caused a lot of weirdness. All right. So let's try a different way. <laughs> This is 
We're just trying to figure out how to get this to look good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to point mode. And I'm going to select four points. So these four. Oopsies. My screen's going wacky. I'm going to hit F. Do I have F2? Hold on. Yeah, I have it activated. I'm going to try and add faces manually. <laughs> and see if that works. So I'm going to select these four points. Let's do the four middle ones. Hit F. There's our face. Go to line mode by pressing 2. Select the top line. I'm going to hit F. Ah, that looks a little better. And I'm still hitting F here. Boom, F, F, F. F. Okay, so this looks slightly better. So we'll hit F for the bottom one too. And we're all we're all hunky dory now. So that looks like I can bevel that better. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select one, hit shift G. Select normals, del delete all the faces there. Go to line mode. Select the square that I can clearly see will be a square. Hit F. We'll go to line mode. We'll do the same thing. Oops. It's hard to see this. Maybe the mat cap would work better. There it is. All right, now I'm going to hit F and we're going to go on our way. F F F F F F F F F F F F F F and then we'll do oop we'll do the same thing for the bottom. Let me put this in a a way that looks good here. Alright, let's fill this in here. F F F F And I think I think we're filled and I think we have somewhat fix the the weird shading stuff so let's go out of edit mode we'll see the matte cap and we can see it with matte caps right ah oh, looks like things are shaded somewhat correctly or i don't really see any issues here so the reason we did that right so we don't have any wonkiness on the edges now i can select the edge and i should be able to i oh my god maybe not hold on There's a weird, good problem solving. Thank you, thank you. There's, there's always a way. There is some weirdness happening here, but it's, it looks a lot better than it did before. And by weirdness, I just mean this face is so tiny. It can like potentially cause me issues, right? Like here's how tiny that face is. It looks like a line. Are tutorials good for getting better at Blender? Yes. Uh, do, Dobi, Dobi Luz, Dobi Luz, you, what you should do is you should follow a tutorial and then try to do the tutorial without using the video. And if you forget, then you reference back and you go back and forth until the most important part of a tutorial is to learn, um, the concepts that they're trying to teach you, you know, the shortcuts, all that stuff. Uh, in the beginning, I don't think, I think for me, what was difficult was I didn't know what I wanted to make, so you just sit there and with a blank, uh, with a blank blender. Um, so the the easiest way is to once again follow a tutorial, and then once you follow it and you make the thing, try to do it again but without following it. Just try to do it by memory. And if you don't remember, obviously go back and reference back, and then continue, and uh, keep doing that and just tweaking different settings and stuff until then. Okay, so maybe merge the distance to those lines that are super close. Uh, but then that takes away the roundness. But I think you're on to something. I'm going to select the whole line. And I'm going to hit G twice and see if I can smooth it out, right? Let's see. If I hit G twice, it kind of like moves it along. And I can give it a bit a better face there. Bevel is still on there, so that's what was happening real quick. 
all right so just so you can see what i did i hit g twice and that moves it along the line and i'm going to do point one no not point one let me do it again double g and i'm just going to move it up so it's it takes up halfway all right there we go we'll just eyeball this right so there it is cut in halfway we'll do the same for the top and the bottom so let me find that line here it is super close right double g we'll do it for the back to look at the back you hit you hold control and then the numpad so here it is double g oh what i should have done is hold on i did this wrong i'm holding alt and i select the whole loop so i should like select it all around okay good now i should just have to do it once uh it's a little i mean that's a little nitpicky there right to, to do that like we can keep moving the tune shader kind of covers up a lot of these uh this stuff the stuff okay so now that we have our wonkiness with our lines obviously we have some density here but that's fine that's fine i'm gonna select the the edge loops i'm gonna see if i can now bevel it and it look decently not with the modifier though just want to see there it is. so we selected the top uh i had to select them individually because it doesn't read them as connected and that's technically an issue <laughs> uh, but we're going to ignore it and hope that this works all right so i selected the edge i hit control b yeah and it still causes me some wonkiness right look at that so there's, on there's only so far you can go with this right so like you said earlier, what if we made extra edge loops? So I'm going to make another edge loop and then slide it. Oh, no, put it, leave it in the middle. And then I hit control B and then I'll put it right, right at the edge there. All right, we're going to manually make this bevel. So what are we, what are we doing? I'm looking at the number. So point three, no, point zero three, no, no, three, no. Oh my god, I did this wrong. Okay, control R, make the line, right click to cancel so it's in the middle. Control B, scroll down so you can get rid of that. And we'll get it real close here. Okay. I think that's close enough. Uh what I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to not the first thing, but I'm gonna hit three. So I'm in face mode, select one of the face, shift G, select uh, similar, and I'm going to select the similar normal. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the period key so I can shrink from the bounding box center and see if I could make a, make a thing here. <laughs> All right. So I manually made the bevel. I think it looks pretty decent, except... It's screwing up in the middle. So how can I fix that? All right, let's look at it. Also, let me set up some more lights here so you can see this on the other side. Where are my lights? So we got one light there. Shift D, we'll do one light in the back. All right, cool. So you can see it both sides okay so we're, we're basically manually making this this bevel that that exists here so it all shades correctly um if i hit g twice what does what happens here hold on <laughs> nothing it's some weird stuff okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bevel it from two different sides the x and the z because we're standing up here or scale it yet yeah. did i say scale i didn't mean to say scale i didn't mean to say bevel if i said that so i'm going to scale it on the x first and let me get real close to this so i can see it on the left side here scale on the x and actually let me let me put a matte cap you can barely see what the hell's happening here we'll do a metal matte cap 
like this one. Maybe, maybe the red one. We'll do this one just because you can really see some differences here. We'll get real close. All right, and when I scale it, you see it's making that edge, making that edge I like, which is good. So I'm holding shift and I'm looking at the number at the top left here. I don't know if you see it in the corner of the screen. It's like 0 0.8, 0 0.9 now, and I'm remembering that so I could just do it on the same side. So let's do 0 0.9. I'm just gonna enter it, 0 0.9, about seven, eight one two three four five six seven eight nine five so point nine five on the x just so it's still shaded right and then i'm gonna hit scale on the z and let me uh see the bottom here let me do point nine five as well point nine five about one Two. I'm just trying different numbers here. One. No. Point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five. Is it even working? Let's see. Can I just do it manually? Let's see. Oh, it's so small. So there it is. It's point like nine seven. Point nine eight. Point nine eight. Okay, there we go. All right, we got that bevel. It looks like it's looking decent, right, compared to this this thing here. I think I like it. Uh, we'll do the same to the other side. So I select uh, one of the faces, hit Shift G, select similar, hit normals, boom. We'll scale on the X, 0.95, if I remember correctly. Yes. And then we'll scale on the Z, 0.98. There we go. We got it on both sides. Honestly, I should have a mirror on this, but yeah, we did some extra work. So I think this worked. I think I got somewhat, you know, what I needed it to, to look like without it... Uh, having any weird wonky modeling malarkey um and still have our rounded edges and stuff so hip hip hooray great and lesta thank you thank you thank you it was i went in if i don't know if you were here earlier but ferd even told me uh, i was doing it flat and it was i was doing it wrong i, I did it wrong th four times <laughs> Well, not wrong, just a very ugly and inefficient way. Okay. Because technically, if I wanted it to look that way. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. So we got this, which is cool. I think it looks decent. Uh, and there's some other things I want to do. What else? Bevels seem to always be tricky for me. Yeah, it is... It is a process. But I think it looks pretty good. So some other and we have the rounded edges. Yeah, we got we got the baseline of the thing here. So let's do things that I know I, I can make pretty easily. <laughs> so first thing I want to do, I, I also want to put the origin at the bottom. I like things at the bottom, so let's put that there. Set origin to 3D cursor. Alt G. There we go. Good stuff. So we got our bevel. Looks pretty decent. Could use some tweaking, honestly, in some places, but like right here in these corners, it's fine. It's fine. We're, we're all, I'm always getting too nitty gritty. This looks fine for right now. We can always try and fix it later. Okay. Uh, so let's do these antennas. I can't see the top of this antenna, but we'll easily do these antennas here. So one of the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the... I'm going to go to edit mode, select the top face, shift S, because I want to move the cursor to the center of this selected object or face, because that's where I want my cylinders to appear. So I'm going to hit uh, shift A in object mode. Uh, 
go to cylinder there's our cylinder and you know what we'll keep it just like that we will smooth it out it obviously has a weird smoothing go into a our object data properties hit, hit, hit auto smooth that should smooth out the top there uh, and then I'm gonna make the origin appear at the bottom so there is the uh, cursor I moved it to the bottom of the face set origin to 3d cursor I'm gonna move this to the top oopsies solid I'm gonna move this to the top All right, since we're in a cylinder, I'm going to select that hall and do shift or no alt S. I believe no, 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 shift S. No, 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 control S. Control shift S. That's a save. Is it shift alt S? Which one is the shrink? Hold on. Oh, it's alt S. So alt S. This is so weird. I don't even have to do it this way. I'm just, it's interesting that, oh, I guess it is working. <laughs> so we did Alt S, we shrunk it, but no, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink it here. We're gonna shrink it this way. We're gonna shrink it in object mode. Obviously that changes uh, the scale here, which we'll fix now. So let me just put it at the right scale. All right, do this. Scale it, bring it over. It looks like this takes up most of it, like one third of it. So let's actually make it bigger. Like that. We'll bring it up right where it's going through. Good, good, good. And then what I'm gonna do is since these are the similar objects, I'm gonna hit Alt D, which does a linked duplicate. I'm going to move it over here to the side. Duplicate linked. So whatever changes I make on one, it'll happen to the other since they're similar. Uh, and then I'm going to hit Shift D. This is not a linked duplicate. And we'll bring it over to the right. We will make it a little bigger from what it looks like there. Uh, and then we're going to start doing some organization here. So let's call this base or some naming here. Base. Uh, I'm going to move all these into a new collection called Antenna. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, Antenna Long. Dot zero, zero, zero. Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to name this one Antenna Dort. Dot zero, zero, zero. And then I'm going to copy this and just put the same name and it'll automatically name it to zero, 01 or zero, zero, 0000. And then zero one and we have an antenna long and we will make it long uh and then we're just getting the baseline here we'll move this move it to the top and we will we'll come back to this one we'll come back to this one let's figure out these short ones since these are linked and you can tell that they're linked by going to uh object data properties and if you see under the mesh this is the mesh data right the cylinder let me name it antenna short antenna short you see that there's a number two on here that means this mesh data is being used twice in in this right so using twice and where it's being used is also here see how they're the same and if we go to antenna long it's this mesh data that's called cylinder.001 we'll call this antenna you don't have to do this i don't know i do it because i i like naming stuff naming stuff is fun so i'm gonna save uh, so now let's start building up this antenna. I was about to rotate this, like if I can rotate this 2D image. Uh, and let's start making this. It looks like it fattens out at the bottom and then it has kind of like a, a brim, not a brim, but like a, a thing around it. You can tell by this little, this tiny little, if you look at this, these three pixels, they indicate uh, that this has, it kind of comes out. Then it comes out and it mushrooms. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, let's start doing that. So I'm going to go to edit mode. Uh, since I see that it goes from a little bigger to smaller, I'm going to shrink this up a bit and you can see that 
the the one on the right is moving so let me just select the face at the top and then shrink it down very slight very slight right uh, i'm gonna go into this camera so i can see it better there we go there we go very slight all right so then from here i'm going to hit e but i'm gonna right click the cancel it's still there you hit s hit e again there you go we got a little brim there this it looks like it comes from the center of the brim so i'm gonna hit i so that insets it all right there it is hit e looks like it mushrooms out right there i'm gonna e again we'll scale it this time we'll hit g and z All right, and then we're going to hit E again. Uh, I'm going to go all the way to the top where the the, 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 the top of the, the mushroom would be. I'm going to shrink it. Oh, I'm going to shrink it all the way down. So that obviously doesn't look too like similar. But if I hit uh, control R into the center of this, then I can kind of flatten or not flatten this out, but make this look like a little better here there we go i'll do another one shift r and we can kind of just round this out there we go i think this needs to be a little closer to the bottom so i'm going to select the top hit control plus on the numpad grab the top and then i'm just going to hit g and bring it down there it is all right let me soften this up by selecting this one hitting g that'll slide it down right there and then maybe even one more at the top here right all right and then this looks like it's more rounded than it is uh you know cut or like solid so i'm gonna hit make a, a loop cut here scale it out and there we go. I think we're pretty much there. And if we really wanted to, we'll hit right click shade smooth. Uh, it obviously has normals there, but we can add in a modifier, the subsurface. Um, and that could make it look nicer. Uh, this bottom edge is screwing up. Right. And to fix that, we can just um, make a loop cut on the base and bring it down. And there it is. We, we brought the loop cut all the way down here. You know, and that's if you want that, right? Because then we have also like this weird stuff going on here. Maybe we could fix this with the grid fill. I'm always wanting to use this grid fill. So I'm going to delete the face, select the edge in edge mode, hit control F and do grid fill. And that pretty much fixes that, that top half right there. Looks pretty good. Um, there's maybe there's another trick here. I know it's flat at the top. There is a thing called spherize. Let's see if it's two sphere transform two sphere. Uh, it's a uh, shift alt s. Let's see. So shift shift alt s. Let's see if this is any good. Oh, it's. It's doing a two sphere, but it's only doing it on the Z axis. It's not actually doing what I thought it was going to do. It's trying to make all the points, you know, unless I have to do it this way. Let's see. Shift all S. Hmm. Another way that we could do this. And I, I'm just doing it just to see if it's even worth it. I'm going to select the middle point here. Uh, now that I have the middle point selected, I'm going to hit uh, the top right here, proportional editing, and that should, and I hit G and Z, scroll down, or scroll up, where is it? Connected only, maybe? <laughs> Am I doing this wrong? There it is. 
Okay. My circle was so big. I had to scroll so much. All right. So let me scroll here. So uh, to make this smoother, we'll do sphere. So that's what we want. Uh, and and I will do. It doesn't matter. Connected only doesn't matter. That's only if the lines are connected. I I put that on there. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, we could soften up this this top half here, right? And there it is. You you softened it out. If you want to soften out even more, you can select the middle, hit Control Plus to select all the stuff, even the the next one, right? Uh, and I if you right click and do, let's see, it's somewhere around here. Smooth vertices. There it is. Uh, so I hit Smooth vertices. It's just right click Smooth vertices, and you can start smoothing that out. And I think is it Control T repeats the last. Nope. Shift T. Nope. Sh Control R. No, there used to be a repeat function. I forgot what the the shortcut is for it. Shift R. There it is. So, if I did, if I selected this, I do right click and hit um, smooth vertices, and then do Shift R and keep pressing it. You can see it starts smoothing it out. So yeah, there's a lot of different techniques here. I just wanted to display. I'm not I'm not going to do any of these. I just wanted to show it off. We're going to leave it flat. I'm fine with it flat. Uh and this has like this soft edge here. I'm like, do I like that? So I select the edge here. Uh make sure to take off proportional editing. There we go. All right. The reason these look different, by the way, is that one has the subsurface modifier. So we got to put it on the other one. And we're good. All right. And then last thing uh, that I think mm, this is looking weird, right? I'm going to take this off for a second. Uh, is that this needs to look a little bigger. So I'm going to make a loop cut there. Make it in the middle. Slide it up. No, other way. Sorry, slide it down. Once again, this is all nitpicky stuff, right? Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? So there it is. That's one. Okay, and now let's do the antenna. The antenna has this part that kind of bulges out uh so we'll build out that part and it goes just about the height of this other one so let's do that boom go to edit mode bring it here those could make good salt pepper shakers too <laughs> reusable right there uh hopefully once i color it and all that it doesn't look like salt and pepper shakers but yes it <laughs> definitely does look like a salt pepper shaker I'm going to select the, the inside there, make it a little bigger. There we go. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to start building out loosely this, um, oh my God, face mode. Here we go. There we go. I'll select the edges. I'll make another one. There we go. I may separate this guy here. So I'm going to separate it. So I'm going to select the line there and I'm going to hit, I think it's V and that separates the, the vertice, right? Boom. Separated. I'm now I'm going to hit L. So everything that's connected, right? I put my mouse over it, hit L. This is all that's connected. I'm going to hit, um, Alt S, that'll shrink it a bit. And then I'm going to extend this down. Uh, I'm going to make a grid fill on this guy. So what is it? Right click, or no, control F grid fill. And there. So just so we have a controlled hard edge there. 
So there we go. Looking dandy as well. And it looks like it tapers off to the top. I don't know what the top looks like. So this, we'll just taper it and we'll call it a day. It doesn't look like it tapers a lot, but it, do, it does look like it tapers. This also looks a little bigger than I think it should be. So let's shrink it. Let's specifically shrink this bottom half. No, I guess we should shrink all of it then. Probably make it skinnier. So I'm going to hit S and uh, shift Z so it'll get skinnier and not taller. Make sure to hit control A and do the scale. That's all set. And make sure to do it for these guys too. Cannot apply multi-user object antenna short. Wow, this is dumb. Okay, so we'll leave these, even though these aren't scaled, we'll get over it. Uh, and I think we're getting there. I don't know what the top of this would look like, you know, like does this look like another antenna? Like, should we just do another? Is that what it would look like? I don't, I don't know. It's left up to interpretation right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, now some things that I need to make are the screen in the middle. The way I'm going to make this screen, it looks like a tube that goes around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make a plane. I'm going to rotate it on the X. We're going to bring it up, bring it to the side here, bring it forward so I can see it. Nope. That's behind it. So forward there. All right, we're going to scale it down. We're going to make it the, sh the shape that it roughly gets. It cuts off right about at the edge there. And this isn't going to be perfect. It's just going to be an homage to this thing. This is a, an impromptu stream. All right, so it looks something like this, I think. Uh, with some curved edges. So let's go to ed uh, vertice mode. Shift, Control Shift B. And let's add in some rounded corners here. And we could probably do this a easier way. Could do things a bunch of different ways. I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to hit X. I'm going to hit the face only, right? Where is that? Only face. So I'm left with the line. Oopsies. There it is. I'm left with this guy. I'm going to right click, convert to curve now it's a curve and now i'm going to make this a thickness there it is make sure it's right click smooth and that's pretty much it i mean that's that works out for what i needed to do if i need to adjust it in a way that is gonna hurt me i will remake it a different way just to show that we can all right, there we go. Let me make sure, are these even touching? They're not even touching. So let's make sure they're right, right up against there. Good stuff. Gradient, well, never knew you can make a curve like that. Yes, I'm glad, I'm glad. This is why I do a bunch of uh, different, I, I do things a lot of different ways when I make things just to show off the different ways you can do stuff instead of doing it the same way all the time. But this is a very fun way to do it. Um, um, I'm going to duplicate this because I'm going to make its own little screen. So I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, I'm going to make one invisible. And I'm gonna I'm gonna work backwards now, right? So I'm going to make sure it has no depth. Right click and do convert. So I'm converting it back. Convert it back to a mesh. I'm gonna go to edit mode. 
select that all, control F, grid fill, uh, and there's my screen again, and we're back, right? So you can see that it's a screen. may have to fix that later but whatever we will we will deal with it for right now we'll call this a uh, screen border and we'll call this screen oops, just a screen we may have to fix this later so but this is like you know it's like the sketch guys we're sketching it all right we're gonna move these into its own collection called screen there we go. We got screen, antenna, and we should move the base into its own thing. Uh, what is this called? A walkie-talkie? A walkie-talkie. Feels like a made-up word. Call this utility. Okay, cool. So we got the screen. It's doing the thing. We're looking at it here. Um, I feel like these edges could be smoother. We may have to remake this whole base, huh? We will see, though. We will see. Okay, so then the next thing I need to make. Uh, let's just keep going. We're going to do the stuff on the edge. Then we'll start figuring out these this whole situation because that's going to be a challenge within itself. That's not going to be. I haven't. When I jump into these live streams, I don't. Uh, I don't practice, so you're going to see a lot of mistakes. Okay, so that, that's pretty much where we're going here. We're we're on the way. Uh, I I want what I'm already noticing. Like I said, is I want these edges to be smoother nicer looking they look good now but we'll figure that out okay so the first thing i'm gonna build is this like little button thing at the end and it looks relatively simple so let's and you know that were his final words <laughs> uh all right so let's get a let's get a mesh and let's, let's just start shaping it up to what it should be so i'm gonna look at it on the left on the left here let me take off this header there you go i'm gonna look at it at the left here while i'm modeling but just know that i'm looking at two screens at the same time so let me take off some of this screen clutter there we go all right so we'll scale it on the x we'll bring it over Obviously, we can go into a lot of details of like, you know, the edge and the border. But since we're using a tune shader, I don't know. We're not going to see most of this stuff. Plus, I want it to look simpler. Okay, cool. So I think we got the line there, what we're trying to look for. Uh, and these lines, we're just going to do them in the grease pencil. We're going to do them by hand. So we're gonna cheat this stuff. I wanna cheat. I cheated on all my math tests. Okay, so we're gonna right click so we can make an edge loop. Right click the cancel so it puts it in the middle. I'm gonna hit uh, on that loop, control B, which is a bevel. You'll see there's multiple there. Just scroll down. This is how I'm making my cuts here. So we'll do, we're gonna be doing two. We'll be doing the long one, which will be about here. We'll do another one, control R, select it, right click. Control B, and we'll set it up like that. Okay, and then we'll go to edge mode. Uh, we'll select these two edges, and we will bring them up. By up, I mean on the x-axis. So there we go. We're getting there. All right, pretty cool. Um, let me select these edges to see if we can add anything cool to it, like adding a bevel, so Control-B. Very slight bevel, you know? Something 
something nice. Maybe we could do a, a shade it smooth and make sure that this block has this uh, auto smooth on. So then some of it looks smooth. Maybe not. I don't know. Shade flat. There's definitely some stuff I have to figure out here, but I don't want to right now. So we're going to make these ridges. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to control R. Uh, do a loop cut. Or no, sorry, control R. And when I do the loop cut, I select, I scroll up. We're not going to do many. Let's just do three. All right, and I'm just going to select every other one and bring them down. Actually, I'm going to just hit G twice and do that. Let's see if they see if that causes my the illusion. That is not what I wanted to do. There it is. That's good enough. <laughs> maybe i should do it to the top even though the top one doesn't have it either but i guess that's what's implied right with the drawing so we'll do the same one two th we'll do these three we'll select the two control x bring it down i don't know good enough for me i i don't i don't particularly think this needs to be super detailed We'll scale this on the X. There we go. All right. So we got that little button thing down. Good stuff. All right. So let's make this guy right here. And then we'll make the, the little band, right? The little band around it. A little band around it. Um, yeah, that's just me thinking, right? Me. Let me make sure my camera's okay, too. There you go. All right. So. Well, let me, let me count the points. One, two. Okay, let's just start. Let's just get the let's get the cube. Enough thinking. Let's bring it in. Let's make it super thin. All right. So we'll go there. We'll make it super thin. Just about there. Okay. Um, we'll get one of the faces here. Bring it in. There we go. Bring it in close. We'll scale it all as well. There it is. We'll bring this face in. On the X. Um, now let's see if I can figure out what I can do here. So I'm going to scale just this side. Or not scale. I'm going to take this edge and bring it up. Alright. I think we're getting closer. There we go. I'm going to make a loop cut here in the middle. And then just bring this one edge upwards. Or both of these edges upwards, I should say. All right. Bring this edge down. We're going to scale the whole thing more because it's still a little big. Bring it in. Maybe flatten it out a bit more. Bring it in closer. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. Looks like we have a little soft edge here. Like rounded 
corners here. Let's see if we can make that by selecting the edges here. Hitting control B. And just doing a little bit of it. Let's see if that looks decent. We're going to right click, hit shade smooth, hit this right here. There we go. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into face mode. So, oopsies. Go to face mode, select these two faces, select those two faces. I'm going to hit I. And I'm going to scale it down to where it looks like it could be it. I'm also going to adjust both faces at the same time. So this bottom edge, this bottom edge. Bring it in closer there. There we go. So now there is an add-on called Loop Tools. Let's see if it's activated. Loop Tools. It is. I have it activated Loop Tools. Because what we're going to do is we're going to select these two faces here, the two faces in the back. We're going to right click and I think loop tools will be here and I'm going to click bridge and that'll make the hole in between it because both of these are selected, right? And I'll try to bridge both faces together. So loop tools bridge. Beautiful, right? And I think, you know, pretty much there, but what I'm going to actually do is make it smaller and now bridge boom 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 we did it okay so then that's done you know at least i'm gonna call it done for now until I have more issues arise. So we got our model, blah, 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 blah. Uh, all right, now for this, this guy right here. We're gonna do this with curves. So before I make this little band that's connected to this, I'm gonna make this band. Um, and yeah, we're gonna do that with curves. So let's see if that's not going to cause me any issues here. As I look at this, maybe this should be like bigger. So I'm going to make sure that the origin is in the center of it. And we can make it longer just by stretching it out there. There we go. And there, there we go. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So let's get a curve here. So what I'm going to do is I have curves, but I also have extra curves in the as an add-on selected. Not that that matters, just so you know that why you don't have all these. It's an add-on that comes with Blender. It's called extra curves or something like that. We could do something fancy with one of these, but we're just going to do a basic, basic curve. Let's do this let's do a circle uh let's grab it let's rotate it on the x uh and let's actually squish it scale there we go let's grab these right here and we're going to work very simply first just with these points here not add a lot of points there we go. We'll bring this in over about here. And since there's a band on it, it'll actually be like around here. Okay. So we'll do we'll do this. This guy will come forward. Alright, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this one point here. I'm gonna hit V. No. How do I separate this? Hold on. 
I think under active spline cyclic is connected. So I'm going to hit uncyclic. So it made it not connect. It's not what I wanted really. We'll take off cyclic. <laughs> okay. So it's doing the thing in the reversed way that I wanted it. So I'm going to select all of them. Uh, rotate on the Z. There we go. By 180. We'll select this point here. We'll hit E. There we go. You'll see why this is important. Because I want it to look like a band. Like this looks like it's like, you know, braided together there. Or sewn together. That's probably the term. Okay, cool. So. There we go. All right, let's give this some depth. It's a circular depth. We're going to be using a bevel object, but let me make sure that I have to. <laughs> All right, so we what we did, what I did was I um, extruded it. And now I'm going to add depth to it. Very small. Holding shift. It's like 0 .00, 0 0.01 thickness. Okay, there we go. Some weird stuff is happening here. Are there two points here? It is. All right, now we're just messing with <laughs> the the curve here. Why is it acting so funky here? I'm going to hit V and do automatic. Oh, I wish I only did it on that one. V vector. Sometimes these also have a twist value. Let's see, it's Control T. You see, it add, starts adding all these twists. So maybe that's it. Let's see, Control T. I guess that helped out a lot. I think the twist value is also here. Tilt is what it's called. So maybe it should be at a weird number, but that's what we're messing with there. The tilt. Same thing with this, like we could add a tilt on here, right? Like this can be tilting. Definitely starts to act weird though. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna make a tapered object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a uh, seven so I can look above. I'm gonna hit curve. I'm gonna hit bezier. I'm gonna bring it up here just so I can see it and I'm going to call this strap and I'm going to call this strap bevel. Strap bevel. Okay. Cause this is going to tell this how thick it gets. Let's see if we can get it. We'll look at it here. All right. So let's go into the object taper object. Oh, did I say bevel? I meant taper. I meant taper. So let's do strap. It's called bevel. Let's call it, let's call it taper. Let's call it the right thing. All right. Strap taper object. There it is. Taper. All right. We see that it, uh, it gets thick here and then it gets thinner at the end. What I wanted to do is be the thickest up here. And then both end to a point that is still existing. So we do that with this tapered object. Let's see if we can see it here. So what I, what I want to do is I want to go to edit mode, select the points, uh, and bring this one higher and make this one an equal. There we go. Rotate this. So it's more like a circular shape. We're going to, 
right click subdivide and we're going to bring this down size this one down and I'm just really eyeballing this really there we go there's scale in it and let's see what this looks like <laughs> There you go. It's tapering. We don't have to get super nitpicky about this, right? You, you guys don't care. So I'll make these small. Make this close. Uh, for this guy, I think it's a little too sharp. So I'm going to make it a little bigger there. There it is. Bigger curve great and then we'll put this in its that in the taper in its own collection called strap what are these cubes oh i'm gonna put uh we're gonna call this um base button because that's what that is and then we'll call this base hook or base Base something, right? Base hook. And we'll select both of the base button and base hook. Hit control M. Did I say control M? I meant M. Just M. Move it to a new collection and we'll call it button and hook. All right, we're getting organized here. There we go. Our organization is looking pretty good here. Uh, and then this is in its own strap there. There it is. We got taper all right so so maybe we can add in i'm gonna just attempt it but i'm going to make another curve path bezier curve we'll move this into the strap because that's what it's going to be for we'll call this strap and we will use we, we will make a bevel object let's see what happens here strap bevel we'll select our object we will add the bevel where is it geometry object and we'll select bevel <laughs> this may not look good as you can already see All right, you know what? We're overcomplicating this. We're going back. We're going back. Undo, undo, undo. Save. We're fine. We're fine with this. Uh, we'll figure out the other parts later. Okay, so we have this uh, strap here. And really, we're just going to just make it barely touch. We're not going to literally make it, you know work here good stuff all right so we'll do that by doing a curve so we'll do a curve circle we'll give it some extrusion we will give it some thickness very minor we will go into the mode here we'll bring it in rotate it on the x90 we'll squish it down We'll scale it down, really. We'll look above. We'll go here. What I actually want to do is hit R twice so we can rotate it like a ball there. And we could just start setting it in a way that, you know, we'll go, even go to edit mode and really dictate how this is going to go. There we go. We scale it up. 
whatever, it's fine. And then this guy right here, we can select both of those, and we could just, it could just touch it. It doesn't even matter. We'll make it touch it. So we're just rotating it on the side there. There's some weird stuff going on here, and I think that has to do with the scale of this thing. Is it the rotation too? All right. We'll leave that for right now. Okay, we have the strap. Fun stuff. All right, all right, all right. Ugh, we got the button, the strap. All that razzmatazz. Now... I'm going to figure out a couple things here. So I have to figure out the, this, this whole, <laughs> this whole or thing here we got with the, with the speaker and the microphone. So let me think on what we could do here that would make sense. What would make sense? Okay. So let's also let's make this invisible. Don't like looking at it. Um All right, let's let's start with an icosphere and then we're going to try some different stuff. So icosphere we will add in some um some resolution to it. We've also got to isolate this. I really want to see what we're doing here. And there's a few things we can possibly do. I'm going to go to point mode. I'm going to look at it from above and I'm going to erase this vertice. So we got a hole there. And erase these vertices. So we have that. I'm going to select all the lines around. I'm going to put, change the matte cap. It doesn't need to be shiny anymore. Kind of just need to be able to see this. All right. Now, to sphere is what I'm going to be using. Sphere. Sphere. Two spheres. Sh uh, Shift Alt S. So let's do that. Shift Alt S, and then that makes it to a circle, which is cool. We'll hit smooth, mm, and just for visibility, we're gonna hit solidify, and we're gonna add some thickness to it. We'll hit auto smooth, and we got a whole. It looks okay. <laughs> We're adding a subsurface work. Kind of neat. What if we added a subsurf or the solidify after? Okay, better. Better. We're getting closer here. We are getting closer. Okay. So. Okay, we got the hole. Now we need, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need four on one side, four on another. And how are we going to pick those four? So let's see if we can go to wireframe and we're gonna erase the bottom half. It should be all these, we'll hit vertices and we've got a perfect half sphere going on here. Oh, did that ruin something? It did. Why would that ruin that? Oh no, it's because I had them selected. Okay, wireframe. Select these vertices. Perfect. Okay. So we got our 
our sphere with the holes and we need to pick eight roughly in the in the spot that they're supposed to be so we're just gonna eyeball this so one two three four so these need to be spread out way more so let's do it from top to bottom so it looks like three down the middle and three on each side so if we're looking at this from above as so here's one and here's one and now we need three on each side so here's one and here's one all right we're getting close okay and then we'll need this one and this one this one and this one All right, that looks roughly where everything should be. So let's select uh, an outward selection. So control plus, we select those, and then we select these. Oh no. All right, what if we just select those and we hit delete vertices? <laughs> okay. Uh, what if I hit X faces only? All right, so I'm just going to select those hit delete vertices. Okay. All right. Well, this looks decent. I feel like these need also be flatter too, but oh, they look good up top, but then on the side, it looks like they're all over the place, which I guess is fine. I guess. Let's see which one can be fixed. I guess with a, instead of an icosphere. We can use a regular UV sphere. So let's do, let's make this one invisible for now and let's make a UV sphere instead. We'll do the same thing, you know, we'll, we'll add in some, some stuff or whatever. Or not some stuff, we'll erase the bottom half. So wireframe, hit B, go, select, bam, half the sphere, right click, smooth, gray, erase the middle point, vertice. Got it. Boom. Check out what this looks like. When solid view, edit. Can't see. We'll choose. Solidify. Boom. Boom. We'll make it thick. We'll add in the normals. There it is. Beautiful. We'll make sure it has. Yeah, it's fine. We'll, we'll make it thicker. Bam. All right, so then we can evenly do this now. It's just gonna look weird, right? So if we did this one, like these out here, so it'll be this ring. How many rings do we have? There are 32, just cause I'm slow here. So eight, so every eight, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're gonna eyeball this instead. <laughs> All right, we'll select that one, that one, this one, this one. This one, this one, I'm 
Selecting them all in the wrong ring. So silly of me. Alright, so we have four. These are all in the same ring, right? This one. This one. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This may have an extra one. Doesn't matter. Let's just see what happens. We'll erase the vertices. And we will add in a subsurface. Okay. We'll probably, and let's see if we can try and make these circular. So, can I select all these and do them circular? Let's see. Shift all S. That's weird. All right. Shift all S. There we go. We'll have to do them manually. But they're working slowly. They're a little big. All right, I think we're getting something decent here. And now what we need to do is squish it down. And I think we did it. I think this is fine. This is going to work for what I needed to do. Better than this guy over here. Let's see. Let's let's take a look at him. <laughs> First attempt wasn't uh wasn't too good. But Second attempt, way better. Better. Okay. So we can erase this. We're going to call this uh, speaker cap. That's zero, 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 because we're going to have two. They're going to be the same. Um,. We will move this into a uh, hit M, hit M, oh, hit M, make a new collection speaker. All right, now we will place it where I think they belong here. So I'm going to hit uh, R, oopsies, R, X, zero, we'll scale it. We'll bring it up. We'll bring it up. All right, it's probably going to be smaller. Like that. Bring Y. There we go. We're going to save. We're going to hit Alt D. So duplicate linked. We'll just bring it up. So we don't change the location too much there. There we go. Getting closer here. Very, very good. Very good. Very good. All right. So we're getting closer to finishing what we need to finish here. We got the top, we got the radio, we got the thing going on. All right, so let's see about making these holes now in the, in this little area here. We hit save. I figure out what the solution for this will be. We're going to make these invisible for now. Because I need to figure out 
what to do here. So let's go to edge mode. Let's scale, move this to the right place here. Um, let me test out something. I'm going to select all the faces here. I'm going to hit C so I can do like a paintbrush mode. Makes everything a little easier to select. Select all these. I wonder if I hit E and I extrude in. And then I hit I. Kind of give it a little inset and then extrude out. Does that give it too much like? No, it gives that little hole that I, maybe is not good. Let me make sure. Yeah, it definitely has some depth in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a couple of different things. So I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this base. Call it backup in case I want to go back to this. We'll save. Okay. And then we'll go to we'll make that one invisible. And let's see some things that I can do to possibly make this work. So first a thing I'm going to try is hitting V or actually hitting P and then separate by selection. So now it's like its own panel. And we'll call it base panel. That zero zero zero. Uh, I'm also going to put this backup one in a folder. Oops in a folder called backups just in case just in case we need that back you know I'm afraid I'm afraid I'm so scared okay all right so we have the panel looking beautiful uh, let's get rid of that so when we move the panel you can see it's empty behind there um, and then th this is why I'll use a solidify modifier when I do all the cutting that I need to do here. All right, so I'm going to look at it from the face value and I'm going to see what would be a good way to go about this. So I'm going to select these faces. So I'll hit C, select these. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, the eye it starts getting funky with some of that stuff. So, there. Just doing a whole lot of insets here. Hopefully something.
Hmm. Hmm. There's gonna be some uh, some thinking I gotta do here. We go. Okay. So this is our base. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna inset it and then make the objects on the inside. Let's see if that works. Okay, let's select the face. Let's make a, uh, let's bring back our speaker. Let's bring a cylinder, rotate 90, scale on the Y. Look at it from a side here. Side view. Oops. There you go. We'll hit shade smooth. I'm going to separate this actually to its own thing. I'm going to turn on a option here to put random colors. Just so I can see some separation here. It's definitely not separating this though. Not by much. Which is pretty unfortunate. Okay. All right, so let me go into this panel. I'm going to select this outside panel. I'm going to duplicate it. And then separate it. We're doing some wacky stuff here. I just want to see how this is going to be possible. <sighs> oh my God. Okay. There we go. Let's see if I can cut this. We're just, we're just messing around here at this point. I'm still trying to figure out the best solution is here. I 
Maybe I should have did some cutting. And that's what I should have done. <laughs> but I hate cutting. Yeah, we probably could have cut and it would have been fine. Which is what we might end up doing. All right, that's one attempt. Let's try, let's try a different attempt here. So I'm going to erase all these. Oh, I'm going to keep that though. So we erase this. This is our base. We will erase the base. We'll go to our backup, bring it back, duplicate it, bring it back to our walkie-talkie, make the backup go away. Try again. All right, let's figure this out. Um, should I separate this and then use the knife tool? which is K. So let's go to the front view. We'll do K. Oh, I can't do anything perfect, huh? I still think I could possibly do it this way <laughs> where I get the circle and I extrude from the circle but that's just me maybe I'm we'll try it though Look at the bottom Get these like little corners here because they all they head to the corner. It'll probably be these two and these two. Oops, these two. That looks about accurate. We'll shift E. Maybe. We got the base. We'll bring it in. Oops. All right, let me select all of these. Maybe we're getting closer here. This could be a solution, I hope. <laughs> I'm 
grab on the Y. It would be nice if it was a solution. <laughs> Alright, we got some thickness in there. Let's keep trying. Let's keep trying. Grab that. Oh, I did not want to choose the top there. Hold on. There we go. Let's see. We'll select all the way up to there. And we'll select not that. There we go. Now we'll grab Y. Uh, what I'll actually do is E instead of move. There we go. This could possibly work. We're getting closer. Quite the hassle, but we're getting closer. <clears throat> okay. Alright, let's fix these edges here. And hope that we can do something. This is a pain. <laughs> We're getting the edges here. Can we fix it? Alright, we'll do that for both of these. We'll hit scale S and we'll do, where's the numbers? Point six. Do the same over here. Scale, grab that. Scale point six. There we go. This, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be identical, but we will we will make it through. Maybe at this point I could select the edges here. Extrude. Too bad it makes all this wonkiness. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think we can figure this out. We're almost there. Ba ba ba. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plane, rotate it on the X. Scale it so it fits here. There we go. Isolate it. Uh, erase only face. So I have the edge left. Unselect it. We'll bring it forward just so I can see it real quick. Um, Make sure it fits within our constraints here. It doesn't at the bottom. So we will edit this in vertice mode. Bring it up. All right, go to edge mode. Select, oh, go to edge mode. Select it all, extrude on the Y.
Okay. Grab all of it. We're going to line it up here so it lines up. And then we're going to select all. Do Alt E, extrude along normals. Add some of that thickness back. Okay, so we. I think we're getting there. I just need to figure out how to. Have these not sticking out the corners since they're rounded edges. All right, let me isolate this real quick. Select one edge. I believe there's a trick for this. Select loops, loop rings. Selects all the edges there. I'm going to bevel them. Because we just need thickness. There, on isolate. Uh, I was hoping that they would be hidden a little better. I think my normals are weird, so let's hit N, Alt N, and recalculate outside. There we go. Let's figure out if we can salvage this. So there's that. We're going to go to wireframe. I'm going to go to vertices, select just the bottom half. And I'm looking at the left here. That's how I'm determining some stuff i'm gonna grab the top same bring it down on the z all right we got this edge that's being screwed up here so i'm gonna select this grab oh too far there maybe the same thing over here is happening it is we'll select it there Maybe the bottom right is happening. Maybe. I don't know. It was. And we'll just keep going. All right. We're closer. We need a solution. This is the best solution I'm going to come up with for right now. For now. Hopefully, when it's in the shader, it doesn't screw up. But that's, that's what I'm afraid of. But we'll see. All right, so we're going to move each an individual, each of these individually, I mean. And like I said, we're not going to make it perfect. I don't have time for that. This is just a live stream. I want to finish it here. Okay. Okay. I think as much of a process this was, I think it's happening now. Okay. I think we're back on track. You know, supposedly it has like these two in the top here and then this is rounded out here in the corners which is cool i guess just more complication all right we'll add in the top two which i think i can do alt e All right, we'll just leave it to that. <laughs> it should be shorter, but I don't want to fix it. I don't care. I don't care that much. Uh, so for the outside, let's figure out how we can do this. I'm going to select this edge. Go to select. Loop select. Rings. You can't see it, but I selected all four of those edges. Control B. Good to go there. All 
All right. And then looks like the, these corners are ed rounded out, but I don't think I feel like dealing with it. <laughs> um, I guess the way we would fix it is we go to edge mode here or wireframe. I can't see it. This guy right here. Maybe it's that. Maybe that's the guy. Let's see if it'll work. Because if we move it, we'll see that he's right there. Eh. It's not going to work the way I want it to. So we're just going to keep moving. We're going to make it more angular and just deal. Uh, maybe we could select this half and go to face mode and select these guys. Maybe make it, um, how do you say, come closer? Let's see. Just select all of them. So it has a thicker border. There you go. All right, I think we'll deal. <sighs> Don't care too much. We will deal. All right, so then the next to finish this off and then we can start shading and move on with our lives and then use the grease pencil. We'll be doing the same thing that I did above. And that sucks because I kind of forgot what I did. All right, so I think what I can do is I can get this guy, and we'll call this speaker pad. That was zero, zero, zero. We will duplicate this and bring it down. I know it's different, but it will help me visualize what we're doing here. We'll bring it in uh, and I'll definitely fix it up soon there uh, let me bring it back to a baseline so speaker pad let me isolate this and let me just erase some of this and go back to a baseline here so we're going to erase faces We just select the tops. Hit control plus. There we go. Hit faces. Go to edge mode. Figure out where those empty spots are. I can barely see them. There we go. Hit F. That connects them. This one connects that one. Connects that one, that one. F is great. Boom, 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 boom. And this one. All right. We're back to a baseline here. Isolate back. Now, if I remember correctly, what I did was I selected these guys. I uh, I think I separated it. <laughs> so P, separate by selection. I'm going to go back to this mode. Edit mode. Now I'm going to select it all. Make it a little smaller. I wish I remember this number. And then I extruded it, I think, within the inside. So I hit E and extrude it just enough. We can always fix this later. I think 
we're getting closer. And let's see if I can just copy this from the top. Huh? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice if I can just copy this from the top and fit it in at the bottom? Let's see. Oh, it may work. Maybe. Let me make sure it all sets in. All right, so there's just some edges we had to fix here. So let's help this guy out. Let's go to wireframe mode. Figure out where these guys are at. This guy. Get rid. Make it go inside. This guy. Make it go inside. All right, all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're slowly. We're slowly getting there. Okay, so now we got this. Also, maybe I should hit smooth on this guy. That looks ugly. And put auto smooth. Just so our edges are smooth in there. Same thing with this one. Smooth. Make sure auto smooth is on. There we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. I think we're getting there. <laughs> Let's do some naming stuff. There's some stuff that there's a lot of base backups here. Let's see. What is this? Right, we're going to call this uh, base body. All right. Let's make them invisible as we go through. What is this? We're going to call this base. Panel dot zero zero zero. Make it invisible. We'll call this the same. It'll rename itself to zero zero one. And wh where is this? All right, we're gonna make sure this moves over to the walkie-talkie uh, collection. They're both called plane, but we're gonna call it base panel yeah we'll just call it base panel as well and same thing with this one see they're renaming into the correct zero one two three four we're good we're good boom 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 okay and then i'm gonna call this speaker uh insert they have to make sense to you so if they don't make if this doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. When you do it, it makes something that makes sense to you. Okay, so now we're back. All right, let's mess with the bottom speaker here. It has three connections, and we'll just do that by extruding out. This has a little bit more fancier stuff here. The stream is getting a little long, <laughs> so so we're just gonna we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it moving. All right, so it connects at the bottom. So let me grab these guys here. Extrude down, there we go. Connects at the sides. So I think it's gonna be, maybe we'll do one of the guys, this guy. And we'll do this guy. That's even, right? I think so. Alt E on normals. It should all go out. Maybe we can move these guys. Let me select that face. And we'll get it right into the corner. Same thing with this guy. There you go. And then we got one connected at the top. So we'll get these guys, we'll extrude. And uh, yeah, that's roughly what we need to do here. There we go. It's roughly, obviously this has a better shape <laughs> in, the, in the drawing and stuff, but 
We'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving. Okay, so we got all that. We got the buttons. We got the holes. We got the speakers. I think we can start shading now. I think so. Let me make sure everything's named up good. I'm going to erase this backup. That was when I was in a panic. Delete that. Make sure everything's named good. Blah, 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 blah. Screen, antenna, lights, da, da, da. What is this Bezier curve? This goes onto the strap. And it's called strap hook or connection. Whatever. There we go. So now I think we can start shading. All right. So let me get prepared for that. All right, let me go here. Go. All right, anybody out there, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Alright guys, so I'm gonna be start I'm gonna start shading this and I'm gonna be shading it with the tune shader that I have made. The link is in the description if you want to use it. If you like it, we're gonna use the tune shader. But what I'm gonna do first is I am going to be right back. I gotta use the bathroom. So let me leave a notepad here. <laughs> B. I'll be right back. Five minutes. All right, so I will be right back. Kelly, what's up? About to use the bathroom, Kelly. I'll be right back. I'll be right, Kelly.
Man. All right, I am back. Kelly says, what's up, Grease Monkey, the homie. Thank you, thank you, I am back. Kelly, good to see you here. I forgot to save. That reminded me to save on Blender. Good to see you here. I'm just making this walkie-talkie from Gravity Rush. If anybody likes that game, it's a great game. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we're going to start shading. If you guys want to use this shader, link is in the description uh, down below. So let me get the shader in here. I'm going to open up the another window here. And we're going to open up the asset browser because I have it set up on my materials here. And we're going to set up the toon shader. Does zero zero zero. And we'll start off with the base. All right, so we're gonna just drag it on. It is on the base now, I assume. Let's see. It is on the base. Now we can go to edit mode and we can start seeing this. Actually, there's one thing I wanna do before I even get into this, which I always forget to do. We got the color here. We can probably go to edit mode now or render mode. We erase this. Let's start building building it through. First thing I want to do is I want to set up my lights good. I want to set up my lights a good. So let's set up lights. I usually want to use very little lights for the beginning. Because I do a lot of work in that shader. So just two lights. One in the front. One in the back. You know, we can see it. It's over here. Pretty close. And if I'm looking at this correctly, the light is coming from the right side. So maybe we will duplicate that, right? We'll 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 replicate that with this side. I'll bring this over here. We'll get this guy here. Oop, this guy. go all right so the lights are set up two lights we got our material and we're going to start adding in the material so let's do the material i have the tune shader um and let's open up the shader actually there's one thing i want to set up actually i want before i even set this up let me set up the background so let me go to the shader editor, go to world, uh, and I'm going to set up a gradient that's this color, but I don't know, with a slightly darker color. So I'm going to hit, it's all standard stuff I do all the time. I'm going to do a color amp. Uh, we're going to do a texture gradient. I'm going to put that on there. We're going to hit control T on the gradient map. So it adds these guys. Boom, boom, boom. Connect this here. Our background is looking good, right? One thing about the background is I don't want the background to affect my object. You see it's affecting it on the right side. is making it too bright. So we're going to add in a mix shader. Shader mix. Put it at the bottom. And we're going to add in a special node called input light paths. And we'll do camera ray. Now. Oh, forgot to connect the mix shader. So if we connect the mix shader now, you'll see that the only thing affecting it is the lights. The background can be super bright. doesn't matter. It is not affecting the, uh, the object at all, which is what I want. So good stuff. Good stuff there. One thing I want is I want the gradient to go from top to bottom. So we'll rotate this on the Y. Yes, Y. And then we'll bring it down on the X. Because we're rotating it there it is there's my gradient cool 
uh, and then I'm going to choose the color that is on here and I'll just click on that bring in the color picker there's my color I'll hit control C over that color and color onto this so there we got the same color except for the gradient maybe I'll make it hmm, a little brighter for the top half and maybe make it a little a little pinker it's very subtle but it's there right it's happening all right beautiful beautiful so the background set this is not set this is also causing some weird stuff huh is that causing from this light here it is we're gonna make the back light not not create any shadows so we're, we're good only one lights creating shadows it's creating a weird thing going on there okay now we'll save and now we'll start setting up how this should possibly look it's going to be a process so let's uh, select our, our base body we'll do the shader looking cool uh, we're also going to add the shader on to multiple things like this whole thing right we'll just like that you know because there's going to be some weird stuff that's going to happen that because they're all separate objects it's going to cause me a lot of issues so let's just put it all together Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we're here. We got the thing. Uh, let's go check on our shader. Uh, and we want to take off the intensity from the bottom to the top. But what I actually do want, actually, I do want that intent. I want that intensity, but I do want the green color. So what if I put it from bottom to top? And we just pick the green. <laughs> we'll pick the top green. Let's see this lighter green. Looks ridiculous. All right, so before we even do this gradient, we're going to pick the right colors for this situation here. So right now, the, the light's coming from the top right here. So you see it's that's how it's affecting it. So right, we're going to put it right about here. That seems about right. There we go. Uh, we're also going to take the Fresnel intensity off. So it's just one color. There we go. And let's start picking some colors. For the brightest color, we could maybe pick it right, right off the thing and then we'll, we'll adjust it from there. This middle color here. Then dark green. All right, so maybe we'll take off this light for now. Just not visible. We'll use just one light, one light source. Good stuff. All right. All right, let's mess with some stuff here. Let's mess with Yeah, the separation here. Make that gradient a little a little better. 
I may even add a texture onto this, but we will see. All right, and now let's add in the the gradient or the, the one from the light source. What do we copy the same one, right? Just 3D things. Hello. Hello, just 3D things. Good to see you in here. Watching just 3D things. <laughs> there we go. Let me try some different stuff real quick. Let me see if I could just add in a noise texture. Take this off and see what this does for me. Let's just see. I don't know. Looks kind of gross. <laughs> uh, let's do a color ramp here. Really doesn't look good like the drawing does here. So yeah, no texture. We're fine. get this color in there okay so one thing we have to change is these base panels have to be like a gray color so let's do the first base panel here let's select oh well, first let's name this the crack thing uh base color base color beautiful Okay, so we got base color, and then for the panel that we have at the bottom, it looks like I have to do a separation of the top here for this top one. But this bottom one, or is it the top one? Oh man, what's happening here? This is the top one. Oh, here it is. So this base panel, select the color. I'm going to copy this name here, just so it has the same name. Uh, I'm going to hit this little key, this button here, new material name it the correct thing uh and for this it looks like a like a like a bluey gray color right so let's take off the gradient off of that uh and let's just pick that color for all the colors that's fine boom 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 all right so right now obviously it's all one color but you know we can add some variation here Let's make that a little brighter. We can make this one a little darker. So we have some shading. You know, very subtle stuff. Doesn't have to doesn't have to scream in your face. We could add in some detail here. So it looks a little bit more matte. There, maybe the separation could be even stronger now. Well, maybe not black. But these can be darker. All right. I think that's about what we're looking for. Because obviously this is being affected by the light here. Now if we zoom up in here. You see it's... The light is affecting it. If we took off the shadow from the light. Let's see if that looks any better. All right. Let's work without shadow right now. Because the shadow's kind of throwing me off. For right now, we will work with just this light here. All right. All right, so things I want to do is I want to make this silver. I don't like how this looks gray. So we will add in a base. We will duplicate it. And what are these called? Speaker caps. We'll call it speaker caps. Uh, let's pick some of these colors. This could be white, which is like pretty close, right? But maybe it should just be the color that's like the background, right? And then just a little brighter. 
Oops. That's not what I meant to do. There it is. What the heck? Well, that is... Whatever's happening here is super weird. I'm, like, clicking on the this right here. Oh, it's because... I can't go any higher? Interesting. What am I doing? I don't know. Felt like a weird glitch there. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's pick some of these other colors here. They're not going to be the exact colors. I just want somewhere to start with. Alright. There's a few things I want to fix here. Like this white. Oh no, this, this color is fine. But the white should be a little bit more vibrant there. Uh, and then I also want it set differently, like maybe right about there, right? So if we move the lights, you know, it looks all right. And then if I put this to metallic, let's see if that makes it look any any different. It's loading, it's loading, it's loading. All right, I mean, maybe that looks good. Maybe. Oops, where's the light? We're looking at it right here. Let's see. All right, let's mess some more with the shader here. Let's see if we can bring out the light here. There we go. And I'm not trying to get it perfect like, like the reference. I'm just trying to get something similar here. All right, I think that looks okay. <laughs> looks decent, does it not? All right, so then something I have to fix here is this base panel is sticking out here, and that's not good. So let's see. And it's gone. There. Okay. Ah, oh, but it's sticking out the bottom. Gosh darn it. We'll let it stick out for right now. And we'll just keep on trucking. Alright, so then the next part is this part. So let me separate this because what I need to do is this needs to be separated into its own thing here. So I'm going to select the middle one. Hit control plus. Nope, that's not going to be good. Let's do this. Let's go to face mode. It's really hard to see here. Let me put this back to this normal mode here. What I want is all this. So we're going to select, press C for like brush mode. And I'm just going to hit the brush on all this. So hit C, select these. Uh, and maybe I'll even select this here. So I'm going to uh make a new material but it's just going to be the base panel here and i'm going to hit assign to this and then that should be good to go we're getting closer we're getting closer step by step here we go and then we unisolate this and we're good okay next next thing we're going to do here is uh this th this brown color so let's pick something like the base color. Uh, duplicate the button there. It's called base button. We'll call it base button. There it is. And, oh man, now we're gonna select these colors. So let's select the colors. Mm. Let's see. We'll 
we'll keep the bright color on there. But for this guy, we'll do this light color. Uh, for the darkest color, we will do this one. And for the middle color, we will do this one. And take off the gradient. Okay. Uh, and then figure out this lighting situation again. Let me bring up the, this light. All right, I'm going to make this light a lot less stronger. So maybe like 500. Bring it closer. What's interesting is this highlight is like green. <laughs> and I think that's because of this. So let's bring, pick the brown color and then bring this to be light. So maybe desaturate it. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. This back looks ridiculous, but we're not going to see the back. All right. And then for this strap here, we can actually probably choose the base button one. Base button. And that kind of gives us something we're looking for. For this one, we'll do the base green or the base color. So let's do that. Base color. Same thing. Nice. All right. All right, all right, all right. Aki, Aki, good to see you. Thank you for the dab. I'm much appreciated. Okay. All right, so we got we got some things going on here. We got the light. You know, we got the It's really hard because sometimes, you know, it's, this light has to be there for you to really see that highlight, you know. And if we added shadows, right, to this, let's choose our lights again. Added some shadows. You know, gives it a little bit more depth there, which is nice. Except, is there like, let me make these shadows, like, better. <laughs> Like more quality. Cause like they, they leave this weird mark here. Is that like something is that like denoising or something? Let's see. Viewport denoising. It's not that. Is it under shadow? We make this. Oh, that works so much better. Yo, that's way better than five twelve. Let's see, twenty forty eight. Not too much difference between 2048. 10, 24 works pretty well. And if we do 64, it had some like ugly shadows. So let's do 2024. And we'll leave it at that. We'll do soft shadows. We won't mess with that light threshold. Oh, there we go. So that the shadows look a little bit better, right? Like if I just. Yeah, so much better. Wow. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Our button is there. Um, everything looks really shiny, so we're going to be fixing that at some point. All right, let's do these antennas. These antennas look like metallic versions of this brown color. So that's what we'll do. We'll just do what is it called base button and duplicate it and call it antenna. antenna there we go and then uh and these look a little lighter and a little bit more metallic so let's let's put the metallic on here metallic um and let's change these colors so our darkest color shouldn't be this dark it should be like 
you know, this dark. Maybe these should be the same color. Uh, and some things we're going to mess with here is the highlight. So the highlight gets a little bit more there. And the first color gets put more. There we go. There we go. Alright. Obviously they look really smooth and cartoony. We will hopefully be fixing that soon. There we go. Uh, we'll save and we will add this same one to the antenna long. We'll just call it antenna. Uh, and for this one, we'll give it its own one. So this one, this first one will be called antenna.000. Or actually, let's just name it what it is. This one's going to be called short. Uh, and then this one's going to, going, to, going to be called long. So long. Uh, and then we'll mess with this more so it looks a little better. I think there's too much highlight. We can lower down the highlight. We can lower down the first color. We could probably lighten this up. There it is. A little better. All right. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're getting much closer. Obviously, this looks so good because it's 2d uh but we can we can get close to this all right let's mess with some of this base color stuff let's see if we can okay we added a gradient here there you go and if we added a fresnel it looks so weird on like a blocky on a blocky thing, right? Uh, so let's copy some of these colors. There it is. We'll put the intensity up to the highest. Yeah, I just like in these certain angles, like these type of gradients that happen at the bottom. Very good. All right, let's put the IOR on there. Yeah, it looks real funky as it's moving, so we're gonna. We're gonna keep messing with some of these settings. Like, should we even have it? Should we even not? I mean, maybe we should have it. All right, when we move our light around. cool uh, there's one thing I want to do I'm gonna put all these into its own collection we'll call it walkie-talkie a walkie a talkie oh uh, we'll call it radio walkie-talkie sure <laughs> and we'll put in all the 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 collections in it good stuff um, I'm gonna put in an empty and we're gonna parent everything onto it so we could just control it all at once so this parent is should be up here there it is I'm gonna call it controller Um, and there's a couple, couple, couple things I want to mess with here as it comes with this shader and adding just a little bit more details in here. Um, but first let me parent everything. So we're going to go into our selection here. We're going to make the camera, the lights unselectable. We're going to select everything. Uh, 
hit control P on for the controller to take control of it. So when I hit this, oh, is it also control on this light up here? God dang it. So this guy, un-P, clear parent, there it is. There we go. So we can control the radio pretty freely. Get the lights and go in there. Okay. All right, all right. So there you go. We got we got that going on. Um, let's see if I can add in some interesting details here that I like to add. So let's go to this base body here. If I remember correctly, this base body. Let me go into my solid view. This base body. I can select this whole edge here, right? Okay. So for base color, I'm gonna do base color dot zero 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 because we're gonna have multiple ones, and I just want to see if I can add in some different variants on the be bevels, right? So let's go back here. Uh, we'll make another one. We'll type another material, base color. We'll hit the little uh, new material. It'll be 001 now. Uh, and I'm gonna make the, the bevel that material, right? The second material. So then I can now affect it on its own. So you can really see that bevel. Uh, I'm going to add it for you to be able to really see it. I am going to, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color just so we can really see it and then start playing around with it. And we're going to start straying away from the reference. Go to color, go to U. We'll add in that at the end of the tune shader. And we could change the color of the edge there, which is cool. Uh, I'm doing this for an extreme thing here, but we're going to lower it now. You know, this doesn't have to be photo accurate. But I am going to add in a different look here. You know, maybe I could try some different uh, color here. Like, what if I add it in? Some more blue, like a blue or green. Just playing around at this point. I'm not trying to, you know, get get precise here. Maybe take off the Fresnel. Maybe make this darker. Uh, bring down the value actually. Just something super subtle. As subtle as I can get it, at least. Okay. We'll leave that for now. I don't know how I feel about it, but I just wanted to get that in there. Before I start doing some grease pencil stuff. Oh, yeah. I forgot to do this right here. So we will do speaker cap because that's the closest what it, that it's going to be. And we're going to call this, what's it called? Screen border. There we go. Screen border. And I think it's pretty good. The screen borders look pretty close to what I need it to be. And then the screen, we will add in a screen or oh, a base. We will duplicate it, we'll call it screen, and then we'll make sure that this is just the same color. So it's all one color. There we go, because we're gonna be, I think, I think I'm gonna draw on it instead. Okay. So that's good. Got our radio thingy here. Lights are going good. 
I'm going to save. Um, and all right, let's see what else we can do. So let's see if we can break up these lines for the, the tune shader. I have this, but maybe I get to make something different here. Uh, so let me go to the green base. This, right? Yeah. Oh, here it is. There is very subtle, but there's a little bit of texture on there. So an issue I'm already seeing here is... I kind of want this inside to be dark, so let me make sure that is set. So let me isolate this, select the inside, make a new material. We're going to do base panel, assign. That should be good. Alright, there's something here that I'm I'm picking up. What is this? It's like got this line here. Okay, what's well, fine for now? Maybe. Where's this line coming from, actually? Oh, it is. It is coming from this particular thing here. So I'm going to make sure that the inside of this one is green. There we go. Very subtle stuff. Very annoying stuff though. <laughs> All right, I think we're almost good here. Uh, for this brown, I'm going to click on... For the, okay, for the strap, we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to call it strap. And then this is the button. And we could probably soften that up a bit. Really, really subtly. Uh, and then we can also bring back this highlight. Maybe it's a little too bright. That's nah, fine. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So I'm going to do the same where I got this base and I made the, the second color. I'm going to make this back end that color so we can see the the bevel on the back as well right now it's super bright back here because it's the, the light and stuff right so let me make that light selectable again you can see that that's just the light back here okay good stuff good stuff all right so before i get into oh forgot one last thing We'll just make this be called the strap and then we'll duplicate it, call it the hook and it should be fine. There we go. That should be fine. Okay. The hook. There we go. Oh my god. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. There's obviously this can be a lot more smoothed out and shaded and all that stuff, but we're just going to call it right here and not call it, but like we're going to keep going. Um, but call it as far as like modeling and any nitpicky stuff. We're just going to we're just going to deal with what we have now. Um, and move on and move forward. We can rotate this around. You can see 
it looks interesting, but obviously it can it can use some more, right? It can use it can use something, right? We even rotate it the same way as the 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 picture. <laughs> My camera is in a weird spot. Let me put the camera in a good place here. All right. Okay. Good enough for me. All right, let's 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 figure out some of this strap material. The strap's a little brighter. Let's make sure we can see the brightness. Let's bring up the highlight. Bring the second color there. Let's put in some strap detail. There it is. Boom. Maybe bring back the, the highlight, though. Like right there. There we go. Luck and good. Yeah, we're not gonna mess with the positioning right now. There we go. And then we can even rotate this a little bit to look like how it's supposed to look. <laughs> Obviously it looks a little weird. We need to also the thing is about this tune shader and all this stuff is like the lights and stuff. And like using the lights to your advantage. Because there we are. You know. With the light from the top. But we don't want it super bright, right? You also want to be able to see see how this is like being lit over here. So like Yeah, this is the, the some of the troubles, you know, with lights and tune shaders and stuff. You really got to be a light person, too. That's why there's, like, that that other um, tune shader, of light, Lighting Boy. That one allows you to do it so you can not use lights. And that's this is the advantage, because then you're just fiddling with lights. And some people may like that, you know. Some people may think that's fine. But not everybody likes it. All right, can I just make this a sun? Would that be better? There we go. All right, so for right now, what I'm going to test out, and my comp it may crash because the line modifier usually crashes, but let me get the line modifier and let's see if we add the line modifier here and how that looks so let's take let's take off all the stuff um i'm gonna make sure that the whole collection's collect uh con selected <laughs> hit shift a we'll do grease pencil collection line art All right, so where's our line art? Where did it end up going? There it is. There's a line art. I'm going to take it out of the collection. Uh, you know, it looks pretty interesting. Definitely can need, need to work and stuff. I like it, but there's always more that you can do. We'll go to the modifier, go to style. Let's bring the, the thinness down. Let's just bring it down to one. <laughs> Right. Two. Three. Ten. Eight. All right. And it looks, you know, it looks all right. I don't particularly think it's great, but it does what it needs to do, uh, especially in, in this view. 
Uh, it obviously looks weird in this view because you can see through the lines. It only looks like this way through the view of the camera. Uh, and it looks, you know, it looks, it looks decent. Um, so, but what I want to do is this line art modifier is all good and stuff, but maybe I'll just use this line art modifier for one thing. And the one thing I want is the outline, which is, we'll make everything off, turn everything off, 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 and creases. So everything's off. Maybe contours will be the one that I only use. Loose, nothing, material, nothing, edge marks. Or maybe I'll do it just for edge marks, you know? I select which ones I want. But for right now, I think this is okay. This is fine. We're not going to use it for right now. So let's disable it. Um, let's bring back our controls. Let's hit Alt-R. Because there's something I need to fix here. I have to address it before something happens. So let me go back to this normal mode. Hit Alt R. It's not going to look good right now since the lighting is off. But this thing needs to be addressed. So I'm going to go to wireframe. Uh, point mode. That's one. So like that. And that should fix that one. And then the same thing for this one. There you go. It has been addressed. Now we'll rotate this again with R twice. That's how we do it. And look at that. That's it's looking fun. Looking fun. <laughs> uh, and I may use the individual line modifier for the rest. But what I want to do, what I want to do is, um, and you know, just for fun, I'm going to parent the lights also to the empty the controller uh take off these relationship lines because i don't like looking at them either uh now the lighting will always be the same because the lights are parented to it and i need that just for now um so i can draw i'm gonna be drawing on this so all right, so I'm going to get my tablet, and we're going to start drawing here with the grease pencil. Uh, so I'm going to make uh, a new collection, call it grease pencil. and get my tablet so one moment while i get the tablet oh, oh my screen's flashing hopefully my stream is going okay let's make sure cool so if anybody out there watching hope hopefully you're having a good day life is going well for you things are moving things are feeling good just getting this tablet. I have an XP pen. That's what I'm using right now. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just a screenless tablet. XP pen. The one with the little dial, right? That's what it is. XP pen pro. No screen. We're doing this by looking straight forward. Like a pro. All right, just plugging it all in, getting my glove on. Bum, 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 bum. Get the glove on. Da, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun, dun. Donning the glove. All right, gloves on. I am now connected to the tablet. I am now one with the screen. Okay, so 
let me figure out what we're doing here. All right, so here's front view. We're looking good. Uh, what I want to do is I just want to add in some of this flare here with these lines and just do it by hand and see how it looks. I don't know if this is going to be great, guys. No idea. So let's go to grease pencil. We're going to put it in blank. So we have a blank grease pencil here. Um, and I'm going to not do vertex painting. I am going to use the material mode here. So we'll do that. We got a grease pencil. Um, and we're going to start drawing on this thing. There's going to be issues that are going to come along the way. I already see it. So, All right. So we have the grease pencil. Let's go to draw mode. Let's test out everything's working okay. I'm going to make sure this is on material mode here. And we're on black. So my drawing is good. Also, let me make sure that... I have a, a keypad here, this Taurus Pro pad. It's on Blender, okay. So my shortcuts are all, well, it makes sense. All right, so here we are, looking, looking good, right? We're also gonna look at this at a different angle over here. Because um, I want to make sure That everything's looking good here. Uh, I'm setting up my view so it's not distorted. If, if you do like on your view mode, if you're at 50 focal, there's distortion. You can see it here. Let me show you. You can't tell this is distorted, but it's distorted. Let me show it to you more. All right. So look how distorted that can get. This is an extreme example. And I don't like that. It's hard to, to do stuff. So I put it around 150. Oops. 150. Uh, and then I zoom out and then everything's kind of squared off and that's how I'm going to work. Okay. So let me get my reference in here. All right. Let me draw, let me draw some stuff here. So we have the pencil and maybe that's what I'll work with for right now. Uh, and instead of this black color, I'm going to make it like dark green. So let's get green and we'll get. Actually, let's just pick the green and just make it darker. Maybe change it a little to the, the bluer side. We could change this color at any time. That's why I'm using materials because I don't want to deal with the vertex stuff. So let's go to the front and see if we can just draw some stuff here. Oh, so another thing I forgot to do is, yeah, this is working, right? Like I can draw over here. Can I? What is happening? Hold on. Oh, I clicked hold out. That's the issue. So my my material had the hold out selected. And that makes things invisible. That's not good. Okay, we're back. Let's erase all this. Uh, it's showing up as black. Um, let me make sure my layer is not affected by lights. All right, there we go. It looks green now. Let me make sure this is correct. Okay, green, but if I had my lights on. Ah, okay, so it's possible to make it be affected by lights. I'm going to take it off for now. I'm not affected by lights at all. And we'll wait. We'll just make it a little darker. There we go. Uh, I'm going to make this um, controller here, the empty invisible for right now. Uh, and I'm going to make the 3D cursor invisible. And I'm going to make the camera invisible because they're all on my way. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to set up for this grease pencil object. Is... Where I'm drawing, so it's going to go the origin, the 3D cursor, or the surface. Let's try surface, but this could cause some issues for me, so let's see. So when we're looking at, I'm going to draw the bottom here. So when I'm drawing on the bottom, I 
right? And I draw that line. Is it working? Let's see. All right, the distance is a little far. So let me erase this. So stroke there. Uh, under surface, I'm going to put it down to 0 0.05. Let's try that. Hmm, there's a modifier on here that they recently added. It's called the shrink modifier. So we may have, we may use that. Let's put this as zero. Let's just see if that. All right, so it's not floating above it, but it is a little in there. So I wonder if we could put 0.1. No, 0.01. All right, that's better. Okay, cool. So let's see if we can add in some of this texture here that this has at the bottom on the reference and add some flair to it. So Right. I'm going to do stabilize stroke. It's right here in the stroke menu. And I'm also going to decrease everything. So make it 10, make it 0.5. I just want it slightly stabilized. All right. All right. Let's add in. Let's add in some strokes. Also, should I put the opacity off? Let's put the strength off and let's just draw with full opacity. Let's also Yeah, let's put the, the size up. Okay. Okay. I think we could start doing some stuff here. We got those at the bottom. <laughs> we could do this line there, which looks fun. Actually, I'm probably going to trace all, all, all around. All right, I'm just adding some, I don't know, lines of distress, some some stuff here, here and there. I'm really just playing around here. I'm just trying to see what's going to work for me. And then continue to play around with this stabilize. Because I want my lines to be a little straighter. But. You know. It's so unfortunate how separated this gets. Like it should probably be. All right, let me try the modifier, that shrink wrap modifier. Hmm. 
Hmm. Since these are made of separate objects, I guess this shrink wrap modifier is only working. This is like a separate object from that whole thing. Can I pick a collection? That would be nice. Guess not. We're not using shrink wrap modifier. That's what I'm learning from that. Alright. Let's see what type of details we can get here. It's interesting that bottom detail. I could have modeled that in, but I guess I can just go underneath and see if I can make that look interesting. And we're going to be coloring these differently. So this is just me getting the line work here. Also, there's an option here that I usually like. I think it's this one. I think it sucks that the grease pencil is like at a distance. It's just not good. I hate it. I hate it. It occasionally works correctly. Let's see. See, that one's on there. No, it's not. <laughs> what can I possibly do about this? Point zero five. Oh my god. Point zero zero five. Alright, let's show that. Point zero zero five. Let's see if that is any good. If anything, we'll have to fix it by hand and go through that whole rigmarole. That one is also floating. Oh my god. Let's get this bottom half. Let's see. And we're just messing around here. Okay, let me. Right, let me raise some strokes here.
Okay, we're just moving along here. nice calming stuff anybody want to chat in the chat please do this is pretty straightforward stuff now just grabbing things drawing making a bunch of lines Seeing which ones work. So remember that production tracking thing I was telling you about, Grease Monkey? Yes, I do. And I kept Googling it and I kept getting an anime or something. What's the you'll need? I got it installed and working nice <laughs> quote unquote working but i still need to tinker with it uh what what's it what's left to do what is But well, there's an issue I'm having with importing CSVs uh, to populate database with production data. Nice. It's cool that you got it working, though. Are you using, like, a Raspberry Pi? Is that what you said you were going to use? I can enter all manual, but the import thing would be really speeded up. I mean, yeah. The import would be the game changer. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And are you just doing it for your own projects? Oh, that's right. Or are you going to be trying to like implement this on like shoots and stuff? I would try and also in a VM. So far, yes. If I get it working reasonably well, perhaps you can help me test it. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> All right, there's, I need to turn on something here. Can I make it so I can always see the wireframe?
Yeah. That'd be fun. Get into it. Upload some CSVs. And maybe I can talk to my... To Ed to see if he can somehow do the EDL CSV export utility for VSC. Nice. Sounds like a great idea. I hope it it all goes through. But yeah, I'm I'll I'll test it. I'm here for you. I'm still pretty noob at this database network stuff. Yeah, but even if we get like the basic functionality down, that would be awesome. All right. The button's looking fun. Maybe I can add something to the circles here. Oh, also, I got to see the Batman this weekend. It was very good. Also, the reason why I missed your stream. Your Saturday stream. Well, that's a great reason to miss the stream. <laughs> and uh, you liked it? Nice. Yeah, we're going to watch it uh, uh, tomorrow, I believe. Tomorrow is the day. So I'm excited to see it. I assume they're gonna continue with this Batman. It is the beginning of a franchise. <laughs> Are you going to do highlight strokes as well? Yes, doing all the strokes. 
right now I'm just doing like lines and using one material so I don't complicate and uh, once again you know me always trying to keep it as simple as possible and then complicate it so right now I'm just making lines with one material and I'm not using vertex paint so I can change the color manually very easily uh, and then I'll start hiding highlights uh, midtones these are just lines everywhere. Everywhere I think there needs to be a line, whether it be a highlight, a scratch, or whatever. And then start filling with it later. I don't like changing my tool a lot. It's upsetting. We're getting there, we're going, we're going. All right. The highlight shirt would be the fun part. <laughs> like, the even more fun part. This is the very zen part of the stream where I'm just making wobbly lines. Giving it, you know, a feel. Oh, dang, I've been up shooting for like four hours. It has been a while. Bam, bam, bam. I am so getting hungry. So glad that we're nearing the end of this. <laughs> Wonder what I should eat.
Fucking going. All right. We're doing it. We're doing it. All right. Let's uh, do this backside here. Give this something to look at. I think I might put like a little uh, opening back here just so it looks like you put batteries in it. That'll add some interest at least. Maybe at the bottom. Take off the size here. Here we go. <laughs> Can I make a straight line? I don't need the straight line. I don't need it. It's the aesthetic here. We'll do separate lines though. With connecting lines here. There we go. be like grease monkey I'll do G and
right. All right, we're getting there. Might call it soon, might call it done. Soon, we're almost there. There's definitely so much more I want to do, but I mean, gotta call it at some point. See these antennas, and we'll do some highlights, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start calling it done. That's when we'll start calling it done. <laughs> All right, let's let's get in here.
funny how much a little bit of like just random lines really not random but these lines really add some more to it like on right off on off on off on look at that that's a lot of fun Let's get another material in here. We'll call this shadows or dark, I should say. And we will make what we'll do is we'll pick the background. Oops. Pick the background. We'll make it dark. There we go. Now we'll do light. And we'll just pick the background and make it a little brighter. Or desaturated. All right, let's see what we can do here. Can I do it with, if I do control copy. All right, we're going to do the light with a fill instead. And then move on with our day here. So these are just highlights that are in here. We'll see how it works, though. We'll see. Like, if we turned off the light, let's see. You know, if we turned off the light, what, what would we want to show up, right? See if this even looks good so I'm like forcing some highlights on here. It should, but we'll see. Maybe we'll put some highlights right on these screws here. That kind of makes sense. These flat, flat screws. <laughs>
All right. So without lights, it's pretty interesting. Still has those highlights. Looking fun. You know, looks good. I think I am going to erase this. We don't need that. What I think we can do though is make another one of the darks instead of stroke we'll do fill and we will pick a dark color and just make it like this a little dark Maybe it shouldn't be dark. Maybe it should be like light, because then we can do something like this. And we can get the light here. Oop, forgot these screws too. Alright, now we turn back the lights. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good without and with lights.
Okay. Now we can add in some line art modifier to top it off. And then since it's already been four hours and 12 minutes of streaming, I got to start calling as soon as I'm hungry. But we're almost done here. It's a cool piece for sure. Thank you, Fur. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate What's the plan for the next stream? Oh man, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm still, I just finished setting up uh, my Patreon. I haven't launched it yet. So after, after just setting up my Patreon, I, I'm going to make a game plan for like at least the next six months of streams and videos. So I don't know right now, but there will soon be a game plan for the whole channel. But it will probably be... Mm, it may be something like this. I'll get an object or something and uh, I'll build it from the ground up, you know You trying to incorporate grease pencil as much as possible. I'm glad I was able to do it on this one uh, but I'm not done yet almost done. All right, let me I Think I drew on it enough. It looks cool with and without the grease pencil too like with without looks pretty plain and then adding the details It's pretty cool Really adds to it there. All right, so let me unplug. I'm done with the tap my tablet. I gotta start start finishing this line art, and then we'll be done. Unplug tablet. Back to keyboard. All right, so first thing I need to do, now that we're back after that silence, um, some things I wanna do are, I'm gonna go to Grease Pencil, I'm gonna select the object. I want to put an outline on this guy right here. So let's do that. So select that. Shift A. Grease pencil from object. There it is. Let's look at it from the camera view. So from the camera view, it looks okay. Uh, I'm going to make it smaller. Maybe 10. You know, it looks okay here. I'll do the same thing for this guy here. Shift A for object. Or actually what I'll do is I will erase this. I will make this one for the whole collection of strap. Why is this part what? Why does it add in a, a line? It's so weird. All right, object strap. There we go. All right. So we get some lines. We got that for the strap. We'll call it strap. We'll do another one for this one. For object. We'll call it hook. Even though it's not a hook though, but you know. Okay. Now let's do let's do a couple things here for the strap. Um, 
For edge type, we'll just take everything but contours. Same thing with strap. Everything but contours. Just so there's nothing weird. All right. Uh, let's do this top here. We'll do the the same. We will do That's weird. The collection. Can we just put antenna? Okay, at least this one works. We'll take off everything and the type. We'll do 10. Here it is. We got some outline going on. And we'll call this antenna. Okay, we'll do the same thing for these guys we'll do collection and we will do speakers same thing we'll take off everything but the contours bring it down to about 10 for style maybe even smaller maybe we do five super small Okay. Uh, we'll call the speaker. We'll save on that. We will add in one for the screen. Let's see if that looks any good. We'll hit shift, grease pencil, collection, but we will do screen. We would do everything but contours. And 10, maybe thinner. Maybe we'll do five. Very subtle stuff, maybe eight. There we go. We'll save as we keep going. We'll add in for these pads. Oh, let me make sure I, I called it screen, right? Screen. There we go. All right, let me add in a modifier for these guys. Shift for collection. Right, we'll have to do these individually. All right, screen, object collection. All right, speaker inset. There we go. Got the speaker inset going. Pretty cool. We'll call it that speaker inset.
Okay, saving again. Um, oh, this guy right here. Oh, there's a button. All right. Delete this line art. So I think All right, so I think this is it. We have the what I set out to accomplish to do four and a half hours ago. There's this uh, walkie-talkie. It's in the game Gravity Rush. I like the art from there. They were inspired by Mobius, the art, the art people. So I decided to make it with the tune shader that I have, using some grease pencil to draw on top of it, add some flavor to it, using the line art modifier, adding some lines. Um. And uh, that's uh, that's about it. Let me do one last thing. Let me just make everything the same line here. There. All right, I was just making everything the same color line so I can change the color of the line very easily. So let me make it gr dark green here. Oh, I guess it does. I shouldn't do that because. All right, that's fine. All right. There we go. I, I set out what I needed to do four and a half hours ago. Uh, this game is great. Gravity Rush uh, 2. I like the artwork. Inspired by Mobius. Wanted to try out uh, the tune shader I made. And uh, here it is. It's all done. It's used. If I mess with the lights... You can even turn off the lights. You see that the tune shader is affected by light. Turn the lights back on. Move everything around. The the tune shader part is not uh, affected. Or the tune shader, the grease pencil. But let me see if it is. If I set it up for it. 
All right, let's see what that looks like now. So while being infected, not being infected, I guess not being infected would be better. There we go. Okay. And there we go. I hope everybody has a good day. I'm going to be streaming again on Thursday. And that's what I do two times a week. So if you made it this far and you're watching not live... Thank you, Ferd. Thanks for hanging out, talking to me. Very nice. Anybody else out there who watch, I appreciate you watching. Thank you. Once again, I do these streams Tuesdays, Thursdays. Uh, I hope everybody has a great day and a great weekend. Well, it's not the weekend because I'm not doing this on Saturday. I hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Ferd, you have a great rest of your week. I hope uh, everything goes well. And uh, have a good one, everybody. As I continue to tweak some last things here. Wow, as I was tweaking, my blender crashed. Look at that. Fudge crackers. No, does it not have an auto save? Really?
Okay, I'm done now. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day!